Bears football is back and that brought many people back to the bars to watch their favorite teams, but the county is limiting how many people can go inside restaurants and required to enforce safety rules due to COVID-19. News 8's Brandon Lewis shows us how people enjoyed the games and the difficulties that workers can encounter. Yeah, Steve and Alicia, game days are one of the big money makers for bars and restaurants all across San Diego County, but today is noticeably different with fewer customers coming through the doors and a lot of requirements that these bars have to follow. <laughs> it's game day during the COVID era, and you couldn't keep football fans like Amanda Pierce away from high dive. First day, I woke up bright and early. I was so excited to come over here and get get a seat in front of the TV. Sports bars and restaurants aren't packed like they usually are. The county limits indoor capacity to just 25 percent, but enthusiasm for football remains at 100. It's definitely different. You know, you don't have the huge crowd around you jumping and cheering, but we're social distanced and it's still just as great as ever. I'm just excited for the season to be here. It was the same at Bullpen, where fans were just excited to sit inside a restaurant again. To be able to come in, watch games, get out of your house, you know, a little relief. With every, like, the cases rising in San Diego, it's, it's so important to get out and support and keep local businesses going. Still, health officials say it's important everyone follows safety guidelines and it's up to businesses to ensure compliance. That's what bar lead Tony Aversa was trying to do last Saturday when he was assaulted at 710 Beach Club. All we asked was that he put a mask on and we'd try to help him out with whatever he needed. That was our, my only interaction with the person, and then I was punched in the face. <laughs> he will now need surgery and will be out of work for several weeks after being laid off for months as the search continues for the possible suspect. It's very rare that you do see something come of it, but I'm going to do damn well everything in my power to get this guy. We have a good picture of his face and we have a video, so I'm going to do what I can to blast it everywhere that I can and you know you never know it could turn something up. Of course if you have any information about the individual who struck Tony you can contact the San Diego County Crime Stoppers at the number on your screen where you can remain anonymous or by contacting the San Diego Police Department. Steve and Alicia. All right Brandon speaking of sports after a couple nights off due to a COVID-19 scare the Padres were back on the field today. The Padres announced earlier today that the team would play a double header against the Giants after all members of both organizations tested negative for the virus. Friday and Saturday's games were postponed because a member of the Giants tested positive, but it turned out it was a false positive. Said it earlier. It's it's nice to be back. It's you know it's a blessing to be back and uh, thank goodness um, you know it was a it was a false positive and and everybody's healthy and everybody's good to go. That's the main thing. No word yet when that other missed game will be made up. By the way, John Howard is going to have highlights from the first game of today's doubleheader coming up later in sports. Today, county officials reported 265 new coronavirus cases out of more than 8,200 tests. That's a positive rate of 3%. 29 of those new cases were linked to San Diego State University, where they've now seen more than 600 probable and confirmed cases. No new deaths were reported countywide. San Diego's case rate is holding at 6.9. If that goes any higher, the county will have to move down a tier, meaning tighter restrictions and more closures. That number will be updated by Tuesday. Two Los Angeles area sheriff's deputies are fighting for their lives today after a gunman ambushed them, shooting them as they sat in their vehicle. And tonight, the search for that shooter continues. And News 8's Steve Fiorina shows us video of that incident from early last evening, which we must warn you may be troubling. And he also has local reaction. Two deputies ambushed in their patrol car last night. It happened in the Los Angeles area. But the shockwaves were felt all across the nation. A surveillance camera outside a Compton train station shows a small, dark-skinned man walking up to the parked squad car, firing a handgun into the passenger window, several shots, then running back the way he came. Both deputies were critically wounded, but managed to radio for help. They were transported to a nearby medical center for emergency surgery. Angry words then from a state assemblyman as a desperate manhunt began. This was an unprovoked, cowardly act. The individual will be caught. Some protesters stood on the sidewalk yelling at deputies and officers standing guard at the entrance to the ER. A tweet from the L.A. County Sheriff's Office quoted one demonstrator as shouting, we hope they die. The deputies are both reported in critical condition. 
a 31-year-old mother of one, and her partner, a 24-year-old male. Both sworn in just 14 months ago. In San Diego, law enforcement is outraged. It's, it's uh, absolutely senseless. Emotions are running high. Extreme sadness and anger. It's too much of this um, stuff is happening um, where officers are getting targeted simply for uh, what they wear, for a uniform, what they do for work. He doesn't blame the shooting on recent protests, many of which turned violent, but said that doesn't help the situation. Also, he's troubled on another level. I don't see the outrage, um, you know, especially from elected officials and, and, and certain certain uh, people in the media and things like that, like you do um, with other incidents, and that's, uh, that's troubling. A retired San Diego police homicide detective spoke about the evolving threat to those sworn to protect and serve. It's really scary to think that, that somebody just walk up and shoot you while you're sitting in your car doing absolutely nothing, but getting paid to be the police officer that you are and hopefully protecting the citizens. A $100,000 reward has already been posted for information about a suspect. And again, any calls to Crime Stopper are anonymous. Steve Fiorina, News 8. Steve, thank you. Tragedy in the North County as well, where a person was hit and killed by a car in Encinitas. Sheriff's deputies say it happened just after 8 last night on the 101 near Cardiff State Beach. They say the driver did stay at the scene and cooperated. Drugs and alcohol do not appear to be factors in the crash. The identity of the victim has not yet been released. All right, weather now another day with mostly gray skies. When, when, when can we expect things to clear up? Let's check in with meteorologist Sean Stiles. He joins us now with a first look at your microclimate forecast. And, and Sean, after the weather we've had the last you know <laughs> week or two, to go outside today and see that marine layer, the clouds, whatever they were, it was very welcome. Well, it was kind of a combination of a lot of things, Steve. It was the haze from the onshore flow. We had a marine layer this morning, and then, of course, we had the smoke from the fires that can continue to burn across California. Take a look at the almanac here and as you can see pretty close to where we should be overnight low daytime high a couple degrees either way. But here's what I'm talking about as far as the atmosphere. This is from Booker Hill looking towards the south and you can see the haze and on the right hand side of your screen watch some smoke come rolling in. you see it right there. There's some smoke rolling in from a fire that's burning up to the north of us. Now as far as what we can expect temperatures uh, today we're about where they were yesterday, slightly warmer, but it's going to warm up just a little bit as we get into the midweek Tuesday and Wednesday, 84, 83. And for you folks in those inland microclimates, 92 tomorrow, 95, and then 95 again 